we're live. Yay! Yes! We win! Hi, Lumineers. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Yay! Welcome to the Lighter Side Live on Facebook. Today, we have a guest, Dershna Patel. She's going to be channeling, as I just found out, first time ever, live recorded all that with Ra. She's done so privately, but not publicly. So uh, we're getting very excited. Tingly over here. Um, Colleen is off camera here. She'll be reading all your comments and helping the thread move freely. And uh, before we dive into this, if you wanna, do you want to have a few words? Do you have anything to say before we dive into it? Then you can calm down and I'll do some housekeeping notes. I really don't have anything to say. My teeth are chattering Her teeth before channeling, so uh, no, I think I'm all good. <laughs> I remember I watched Dershna channel one time and she pulled out one little tiny cedar incense stick. And she goes, it's all on you, man. And she lit it and cleaned the space with it. It was just like the most... Right? Do you remember? It was like, oh my god. Now when I pull out one incense stick instead of five, I like to light many. I think of Darshna. It's all on you, Darshna. No pressure. Oh my god, I'm so excited to talk to Ra. Okay, so while Darshna's calming down, um, housekeeping notes. Darshna does do public channeling, like myself, over at the Center for Love and Light. She has one January 12th, if you're local. Come on by and see it. And uh, she doesn't know the topic yet, but it is bound to be superb. She does her live channeling on Learn It Live, so no matter where you are, you can tap into it there. You can find Dershna at unscriptedway.com. That is her home base of everything that she does. And you can also find her on Facebook as well, Unscripted Way, Dershna Patel. For myself, we do have some live... Uh, live streaming classes coming up, the basic class, basic mediumship, intermediate mediumship, where we start at the bottom, talk about belief systems, and kind of grow into what your natural abilities are, how do you connect with it, how do you retrieve information from subtle light energy, whether that's reading an aura or energetic field, whether that's doing tarot readings or readings with instruments or tools, or doing readings just by perceiving subtle light energy. And then we get into a live advanced mediumship class and that's here in Atlanta at the Center for Love and Light, the weekend of March 24th. And that's where we'll be learning how to channel that energy. All right, I'm so excited. The feeling in the room has kind of pulled in. You know, it's light. But at the same time, I do feel like I need to whisper to you guys. So I'm going to scoot over and allow Ra and Drishna to take the show. Okay, so you want me to do my thing? You take about a minute, think so. you know the drill. Yes. I'll be about 5% in my body. For those <clears throat> of you, um, you've seen some channelers on this show before. Um, I remain about 5% present just so um, I can learn what's being shared, but most of me is out of the body. So enjoy it. It takes me about a minute. I am Ra. I greet you with the love and light of the one infinite creator. How may I be of service to you today? Hi Ra, my name is Jamie. And you are in front of a live streaming, so we have eyes and ears and an audience out there in the technological world. Is this okay with you? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Rob, before 
we begin a conversation, I would love to know more about you. And our, our listeners and watchers would like to know more about you, where you come from. Thank you for the inquiry about where I'm from. So Ra is actually a collective vibration. We are known of a, as a social complex. So we were at one time individualized mind, body, soul, entities, and through our consciousness evolution, we became merged into one collective known as Ra. Ra has been introduced to the human civilization across your ancient traditions, such as the Egyptian, Peruvian, Atlantis, and other former civilizations that have resided across your globe. So Ra is a collective energy from what we call the sixth density of vibration. So understanding that the universe is comprised of particles of light, which inherently is the particle of love. Love and light are one and the same. This vibration is a distortion of the law of one, the notion that we are one unified consciousness, one thought, in our individuated identities are simply a distortion of this originating thought, this law of one. Mm -hmm. So I have played, we have played, a role in your ancient civilizations, best known for the work in Egypt, for example, on the Great Pyramids, and the pyramids that reside across many of these ancient civilizations. Ra, is there any contribution that you're providing to our current day civilizations? We are actively involved in the nurturance of the consciousness awakening that is happening here on the planet. So there is an evolution that is occurring, known as the fourth density, or in some vernacular, the fifth density. May I take a moment to explain what I mean by the densities, please? So densities are vibrational complexes, beginning with the root chakra and traversing up into the energetic framework. So the root chakra is Awareness itself, awareness of being alive. From there we move to the second chakra, which is growth. This is the orange ray. Many upon earth are currently at this state of awareness, of growth, of sustainability, of security, of survival. Hmm. From there we move to the third chakra, which is self Awareness, awareness of one's awareness. This is where the work that we are currently engaged with, the human civilization, is arising. We are helping individuals seeking that awakening to raise their vibration in order to experience that awareness of awareness. Okay. Once that awareness of awareness arises, you may then become aware of your own mental, energetic, and emotional patterns. From there, we move to the fourth density, which is the heart. It's the space of love and compassion. In this particular density and that vibration that we are moving the earth into currently, supporting that effort, the individuated mind-body, energy complex, understands that it is in an interconnected web of a unifying energy that permeates all of existence. This becomes the seed of awareness of the law of one, the one originating source energy within the universe. From there, we traverse to the fifth density, which is wisdom, the throat chakra. And then the sixth density becomes 
the integration of love and light and light and love. This is the awakening of deeper abilities within the human form, your so-called psychic abilities. Now, traversing these densities can happen in parallel. So many on Earth are experiencing the intuitive expansion along with the understanding of the expansion of the heart and the unifying collective energy of the universe. From there, the seventh chakra is the gateway to infinite intelligence, the fabric of existence itself. And then the eight density moves you into another octave of which we as Ra have yet to glimpse. So the eighth density is something that you have not glimpsed? That is accurate. You see, there are octaves of energy. Okay. And so every chakra, think of it as a piece of that octave, a particular yes. note, a vibration within that octave. We cannot consciously fathom what exists vibrationally beyond our capacity to grasp mentally and energetically one in the same the notion of dissolving away into this infinite love, the creator itself. Mm. So your current day contribution to our civilization is helping our awareness of mind, body, energy to raise its for, I think, lack of a better term, awareness, connection awareness. Is that correct? That is accurate. So those who are seeking expansion of consciousness, they begin researching, they begin calling out for love, guidance, and support. Mm -hmm. We, as a collective, answer that calling. We are wanderers in the universe, supporting the notion of this expansion of love and consciousness and the returning of the law of one, this understanding that original thought is the unifying wisdom behind all of creation, that we are all co-creators of this reality. So we assist humanity because understanding that we are all one and the same energetically, that we originate from the same source, an injured arm, for example, would be minded, would be cared for and nurtured and tended to. So when we see the grappling of humanity to transcend to this next level of vibration, it is a 75,000 year cycle. We are supporting that evolution that is meant to arise at this time. Rob, may I ask permission to include our viewers' questions during our conversation? Is this acceptable? I am here to share the law of one in any way I may be of service. Yes. So, Lumineers, if you're listening and you have a question for Ra about um, engaging in enlightenment, alignment, awareness, connection, reach out and ask. I have a question. This is from Luna. What was the purpose of the creation of pyramids and what do the pyramids contribute to our current civilization? Greetings, Luna. Thank you for the question about the ancient architecture of the pyramids speaking particularly in those found in ancient Egypt. So the pyramids were designed as a healing vessel. These pyramids, the Great Pyramid in particular, was created, created as thought form. In your current paradigm of beliefs, it is not yet accepted that thought can create material objects. We created the pyramids 
in order to support humanity's evolution and transcendence to the next density in preparation for the 75,000 year cycle. So we were moving humanity from density two to density three in preparation for the fourth density that we speak of now based in the heart. So the pyramids were not designed by hand. They were designed of thought. Within moments, they materialized. We created them not as a single structure, for then we would be revered as gods to the beings on the planet at the time. So we made them as stones to appear as though, for those who did not witness the creation, that they were created through skilled labor. That is why there is yet to be an explanation of how this civilization was able to construct such architecture, such precision. The alignment of the pyramids coincide with constellations and ley lines within the earth, harnessing and capturing the vibratory frequency available in the cosmos and correlating with precision the energetic and magnetic potential within the Earth's energy. So the ley lines are magnetic lines carrying the Earth's energy. So the pyramids draw in cosmic energy and unify them with Earth energy, raising the vibration, removing distortions from the mental, emotional, and energetic body in order to support transcendence. Now, that was an effort to begin planting the seeds of the law of one within the civilization. The power was misused and our project was abandoned. The pyramids as they reside today are simple instruments. They no longer possess the powers they did for they've been stripped away through humans' hands and through our intervention of their potency and power. For now, you have transcended as a civilization to this next vibration. It is within the energetic frequency of the earth and all of you have access to it as you begin your own work in expansion of your own consciousness. Are there further questions about the pyramids? This raised two for me. That um, is there a benefit, not just for our civilization, but for consciousness of Ra and beyond more, for us to raise our vibrations? I'm, I'm hoping this makes sense. Like. Um, is there an end result? Is there something that we need to reach for some sense of balance or awareness? Why is there a need for us to wake up? There is a cosmic timeline that has been set. Consciousness itself has created this notion of evolution, of expansion. Mm -hmm. So the need for individualized awakening stems from this notion of ascension, also known as the harvest. We are in the process of harvesting souls to move to this next density. Now, this is, as well as the entire universe, a hologram. So when we say ascension, it is an energetic phenomenon of moving into a new paradigm of energetic existence. And out of that energy and the new vibration, the pillars of society will begin to reshape. There's a yearning within to change the past ways that no longer serve humanity. So you will notice an escalation of chaos. 
Nature creates chaos in order to create a higher level of order. Do you see people as being part of nature? It's one and the same. I enjoy that answer. <laughs> the other one, uh, the second question that arose was, you mentioned that you were here previous and that the, the situation or project was abandoned. Um, and here you are again, Ra, helping our civilization. May I ask, what is it about Earth and its human existence that draws this um, collection to help us? Like, what do you see in us beneficially to the greater whole? I understand the inquiry. Why would we care is another way to express that. Is that accurate? Yes. We care because we are all the same part of the one consciousness. So just as an injured arm would be nurtured and tended and cared for, as spoken previously, we are here to nurture and tend and care for the evolution of this civilization. And this civilization is an aggregate of souls from across the galaxy, from across the universe. So Earth in and of itself becomes a very special project in the cosmos because of its complexity of interspecies, if you will, interbeing that creates all sorts of polarity in day-to-day -day existence. Earth is one of the few places where such depth of polarity exists, and this allows for a deep sense of learning and growth to take place. So polarity is the furthest point of unity from the one consciousness. With polarity, it's an understanding that there are distinctions of I versus you. And so in that distinction, there can be conflict. There can be difference of opinion, creating the opportunity for growth and expansion. So our interest in Earth is to nurture the evolution because we are all one. And as somewhat of a social experiment to understand the inner workings of consciousness itself, you see, all of this is a journey. All of consciousness itself is like a game to experience consciousness experiencing all facets of experience. So we create polarity and duality and distinction of good, bad, right, and wrong, in order to have the full cycle of learning and development to return to this notion of oneness. We become two, three, four trillions in order to then learn and relearn the basic premise that we are all one. Thank you very much. I have a question from Mary. Are there structures like the pyramids being built in our current civilization to assist the current ascension process? And then I have another question that kind of backs on that, say, if there is those structures right now, where are they located? Thank you for the question, Mary. Within Earth, there are technologies available to support ascension. There are homemade pyramids people create to harness the energy created by the pyramid structure itself. The shape itself transmutes energy. Are there known large scale implementations underway? One moment.
So the builders of much of the society, for example, here in the West, I'm searching for the name of that society. The Freemasons, for example, understand the laws of structure and how to harness structure to raise vibration or to hold a particular intention. These master builders have created buildings across the world that harness information and energy. When you walk into these buildings, you feel the intention. Are there large-scale healing temples created? Absolutely. Through major religious institutions that understand the premise of the architecture and the sacred geometry, the geometry itself harnesses this energy and elevates vibration. So looking at major structures of the world, and I would invite all of you, as you enter places to feel the vibration and either the disharmony or the unity of the vibration itself. Thank you. I have a question from Sagrera. She asks, would you please ask Ra about why the Egyptian gods chose to present themselves with animal looks? like bird heads, dog, park cat, lion, etc. Thank you for the inquiry, Sagrira. The combination of animal and human-like features was portrayed by the Egyptian civilization because, like anyone seeking to capture what cannot be captured in words or images, they begin to consolidate known imagery to convey what it is that they are experiencing. So although we are human-like, we are not humanoid. So how we appear energetically may often have the symbolism, the energy of particular animals. Call them totems, if you will. So the Egyptians began to transcribe the energy, the essence of what they are sensing into images that are familiar, that have some form of reference for them to share their experience with others. So, Ra, does this mean that you align yourself with being extraterrestrial? That would be one name, yes. Could you share with us other names? Interdimensional, multidimensional, interplanetary, intergalactic. There are many spiritual beings, beings of the light, light beings. What do all of these titles or labels have in common with each other? The commonality between these terms indicates expansion. Expansionness of knowing that there's more than just the human civilization. Does that answer your inquiry? Yes. Ra, if I can, I'd like to change gears a little bit, and I would like to ask, from your viewpoint, from where you are, and throughout looking at our timeline, our history, our future, what is it about the human experience that is so extremely valuable? I'd say beyond the polarity that you mentioned previous. This is an insightful question to be asking because the human experience is one of sorrow and suffering. 
That is why we become called upon to support one's remembering of the law of one and the idea of the vibration of love that permeates all of existence. So the human condition is designed for deep growth at the spiritual level, at the soul level, and the soul is a mind-body-spirit complex. It's an identity. It's a distortion of the law of one. Think of it as a fractal of original creation. So people choose to incarnate, beings choose to incarnate in this particular journey of being human in an effort to deepen lessons and some to simply experience what it is to be of the earth. Others are here as teachers and guides who often, through the veil of forgetfulness, lose their way. So we offer guidance to help those seekers reawaken and embrace their intuitive knowledge and information to help them remember they were here to help raise the vibration. Thank you. I have a question from Arena. How does ascension occur? What do we as humans need to do to ascend? And how do we know that we have ascended? Thank you for the inquiry. Ascension is a property of vibration. So think of ascension as a reintegration of, let's say, water particles into the ocean itself. So as you're ascending, you recognize you are a droplet of water. Recognizing you are a droplet of water and then remembering that you belong to the ocean. That is one feeling of ascension, is the remembrance of this unity consciousness. What can be done on the journey to reawaken and to remember this unity consciousness, this loving vibration, is to begin with self-love and self-nurturance. That is the core of the human experience, is in the sorrow to come back to love, beginning with self-love and recognizing your inner experience is creating your outer reality. This is the co-creative force that is a constant across the universe. So becoming aware of your awareness and then learning to love and embrace yourself, learning to love and embrace all others despite where they are in their own process of expansion and awakening. You see, we are on this journey of embracing the law of one, and the law of one has two sides. Service to self and service to other. So the service to self can be think of, can be thought of as the self-serving motivation, which still comes from a place of love, limited by self-love. So consider that the negative polarity of the law of one. Notice everything has a light and dark side. It is the essence of the universe. So service to self is self-love, is putting self first. Then the other branch becomes service to other, of which the Ra Collective represents. Service to other is the love of all of existence, beyond and transcending one's own personal needs. So tending to those first and then recognizing to be of service to other holds great value in recognizing love and light and light and love, and the two blend together. 
Ra, you are receiving a lot of gratitude and thank you from the viewers and listeners. Um, I, I wanted to ask this kind of thought to manifestation and this kind of alignment that you see that we can have between mind, body, and energy. Will we see that accomplishment on Earth again? This is the intention. It's for that reality to manifest on Earth. So knowing the universe is a hologram, yes. there will be some souls that do ascend to the next level and will notice a rebuilding of the very pillars of society, one that sustains all needs as equal. Ra, when you speak about ascension, will we still have our physical bodies as we're making this transition? In this next form, yes, with heightened abilities. So many people are noticing across the world today heightened sensitivities, intuitive capacities that have mm -hmm. been turned on or increased. This is the work of the next vibration, is to harness and cultivate the potentials within those abilities. It's the invitation then to connect with beings across the galaxy. So this next vibration brings with it a new civilization anchored in sustainability and all needs being equal. Wow. <laughs> Trying to keep it together here and, and not sound so exciting. Um, the feeling in the room, it's, it's, I'm very cold yet my palms are sweating and my feet are sweating and I feel extremely calm, but on the inside of me, Ra, I feel tremendous excitement. So I'm having a lot of conflicting emotions sitting next to you. I just wanted to share that in case any of the viewers were going through the same polarity dichotomy. Uh, we have many more questions out on the thread that we would like to bring forward, if that's okay with you? Absolutely. Great. Uh, Megan and Mary both would like you to explain the Merkaba. The Merkaba, the Merkaba, or the star tetrahedron, is a geometric shape around the human energy field. This set of triangles create the container for your physical, mental, and emotional complex, or bodies, if you will. So the Merkaba are two equal triangles starting at, let's say, two feet above the head through the knees at the base of the first triangle, then the other triangle, the point at which resides two feet below your feet in the ground, and the base of that triangle up through the shoulders. These triangles spin in opposite directions, giving you your astral body and the ability to travel and transcend time and space. So the Merkaba was a critical structure in the Atlantan civilization. Atlantis knew how to work with this particular technology and to their demise, misconstructed a particular larger scale Merkaba that resulted in the devastation of that civilization. So to the earlier question, asking about larger scale infrastructures being created mm -hmm. to support the ascension process, we withhold some of the knowledge of where these are housed, for they may become used as weapons with the capacity for mass destruction. So the Merkaba is part of the light body. It's part of the energetic blueprint and infrastructure that holds your mind-body-spirit complex in place. That was beautiful. Are there small things that we can do within our home structures or in our work environments that can help 
balance this energy or promote it to use it in a more beneficial way? There are techniques to help clear the energetic framework and amplify the vibration in and around the body. Crystalline structures, crystals, can be used with knowledge and awareness to help amplify particular frequencies in the body. Energy work can also support this process. Mm -hmm. Sound healing can activate connection points around the body as well. And within the home, clearing and holding intention for higher vibration, the removal of energetic distortions through simple tidiness, so to speak, like cleanliness? Cleanliness leads to a diminished amount of energetic disharmon disharmony in one's home energetic field. So keeping things structured, keeping things clear and clean on a material level, and then energetically holding intention which in and of itself is vibration, holding intentions of love, health, abundance, gratitude, vitality, love and compassion, filling the space with those intentions and any others you seek, such as joy. Elevate the collective energy in a home. I would like to ask if there is one very basic crystal or instrument or item that the very common human um, need to have in their kind of first aid kit for increasing their energy or balancing it. What would you suggest? I caution the use of the word need to have, as this is an individuated experience of what resonates with the particular individual. Yes. The notion of having quartz in a home, quartz is a very common element mm -hmm. on earth because it maintains information. That crystalline structure can be programmed as it has been within the brain itself to transmit and receive information. So quartz would be a short answer as a viable crystal to have within your home framework. Thank you very much. Colleen. I have a question for Marshawn. Marshawn is asking, is being human on Earth the only place to experience such pain? If yes, then is it also the only place to experience such joy? Thank you for the inquiry. Marshawn, Humans experience a distinct form of sorrow, of loneliness, of grief that is often unfelt across other places in the cosmos. It is known that there are other places where such experience does exist. For example, Mars once had a flourishing civilization that was more oriented to service to self that vibration which we spoke of earlier. So they had transcended to the fifth density of the heart and chose the service to self, creating an environment of conflict, of grief, of despair and war. So sorrow was a common experience among their people. However, emotions become a very distinct facet of the human experience. Our ability to feel in the human body is unique. The human body has been designed to integrate the mind, the body, and the spirit in a way that closely tethers all three. So when there is disharmony or a distortion, for example, in the mental body, the inability to think clearly, it begins to affect the physiology, the body. 
Similarly, when there are emotional disturbances, it begins to create mental incongruity. So humans have a particular vessel that so closely correlates and integrate mind, body, and spirit in such a way that it makes it difficult to become aware of this complex structure. So suffering arises when we are unable to step out of the designed framework. So we often move and shift from the second chakra, the sacral chakra of growth, to the third chakra of self-awareness, of self-consciousness. So there are other civilizations experiencing similar, similar experiences. However, on Earth, the complexity is greater. And you're then interacting with others who are experiencing the same complexity, making for a very cumbersome day-to-day -day life. Thank you. I have a question from Jimmy. Ra, can you tell us how the energetic influx that is presently flowing through our solar system is affecting us here on Earth? Yes. There is a higher vibration coming to Earth stemming from the solar flares and the solar radiation. The sun at the epicenter of your logos, of your galaxy, of your solar system, creates shifts through its energy that affect the core of the Earth and begin to change the resonance of the Earth itself. So the galaxy itself is undergoing a major expansion, and on Earth, this is felt through a shift in the vibration. You may notice month to month, and definitely year to year, changes in your affect, in how you're feeling. Those feelings, those emotions, are the undercurrent pointing to the shifting vibrations stemming from the earth as a result of this orchestrated change across the galaxy. So you feel it from a consciousness expansion, but it is stemming from either emotional imbalance or new depth of emotion that you might be experiencing it may come from the body not feeling as though it did just a year ago. Sensitivities are increasing as this vibration is changing the very molecular structure of your physiological being. So biologically, you are unlocking new DNA. You are unlocking new capacities within the human structure. So these vibrations are so to speak, turning on your full potential. Does that answer the inquiry? I believe it does. Yes. Can we go for mm -hmm. five? Are you comfortable, Ra, if we continue for um, five to ten minutes more? Absolutely. Colleen, do you have any questions? Thank you so much, Jimmy, Mary, Marshawn, all of you. It's wonderful. Thank you for typing. Ra Alana asks, are there other energetic beings who represent the side of service to self? Are they actively here on Earth? Yes. There are beings that are dedicated to the service to self, aspect of the law of one. On earth, such beings, such as the Maldeks, reside in inner earth, known as 
They have a nickname in your vernacular, Bigfoot. So Bigfoot actually originated on another planet, and they were more humanoid in nature. When they had destroyed their planet, Maldek, they were brought to Earth and relegated to a lower form of existence. And when I use the term lower, please note that it is not a hierarchical measurement. It is lower in terms of vibration and in terms of the densities we spoke of. So the Maldeks were relegated to a second density existence on Earth, specifically in inner Earth. They were and continue to be service to self and are being watched over to help nurture and guide their evolution and their ideal expansion to service to other. Thank you. We'll take one more question. I have a question, and unfortunately I can't remember who it was from because I can't find it, but I remember the question. It was, can you explain humans of earlier civilization and the various different blood types? Yes. So blood types, think of blood as the water that is common, that runs through all humans. So depending on where one originated on the Earth's surface, blood types become a representation of this originating point within the different civilizations on Earth. Some of them arose from Lemuria, others from Atlantis, and others through other ancient civilizations across the planet. Peru, for example, Egypt as another. So this common liquid begins to take its own vibrational shape, giving it its own distortion, its own type, if you will. So the different types represent an originating point. Because of the years that have passed from originating source and existence here on Earth, there remain only a handful of types because of the breeding that takes place. They become unified. Does that answer the inquiry? It does, but it brings up the question of were there more blood types than the ones we have now? The answer would be originally yes, because there were multiple species, if you will, different types of beings that were brought to Earth at different points of time in the civilizations. So this is a softer way of saying that human and ETs um, mated. <laughs> that is accurate in partial. You see, humans themselves are mostly not pure human because the originating DNA was derived from many different sources. So again, humanity itself is a project of multiple beings coming together in the same place. Would you feel it would be wise to then look upon our history as not being so Earth-centric, but more cosmos, more more open or accepting to knowing that other extraterrestrial races were mixing with us on Earth and helping us evolve? That is an accurate assumption. You see, the limitations of the belief structures in place today preclude or inhibit your scientific understanding of the origins of humanity. That is why the missing link remains missing because there is no scientific explanation in the current paradigm that you employ. 
When we adapt the new paradigm, will we end up finding the missing links? I believe you will find the missing links through understanding your own composition. So as the inner journey continues to understand oneself, you will begin to unlock the mysteries of the known universe. Because self-understanding is understanding of the universe. It's one and the same. I like that imagery. Um, getting back to the blood types, is there any research done already that links certain blood types to certain extraterrestrial races? Like the RH negative factor in blood? Is it linked to anything beyond earthly means? I'm searching. I felt that. <laughs> I felt like I was running through something, like an old library file. Something that us on Earth can observe or see without needing to access channel or ETs. Currently, there is not public information on this research that is being done. Okay. It is covert at the time. I look forward to where it's public. Ra, is there any words or messages you would like to leave behind to our viewers um, before we say goodbye? I appreciate the opportunity. I would invite all of you to answer the yearning within you. Many of you have incarnated as wanderers, and you wonder why you're here on earth. You ask such questions, we hear them. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Please know, there is not always something to do. The name human being was given to remind you to be. You are human beings. As you be, you emanate a vibration, a particular frequency. If you choose love, if you choose light, you choose a higher vibration. Your being alone amplifies. It awakens within you a higher vibration, and it unlocks within those around you a higher vibration. It is self-accountability for self-love. In that self-love, you see the creator. Look in the mirror, see the creator. Look in another's eyes, see the creator. We are one in the same. Beyond the skin color, beyond the species, beyond plant, animal, we are all one in the same. Material and immaterial object are all made of the same infinite intelligence. You are more powerful than you realize. Look with the real eyes. It is beyond the physical body. So call. Your call is not unheard. Because in that yearning, you open yourself up to new answers, to new wisdom and insights. It is not outside of you. It is within you. Formulate your own belief systems, your own truth. Hinged in this idea that all is one creation. That is all. Thank you very much for being here. It is my distinct honor and privilege to serve. We wish you well on your journey back, and we give gratitude for Darshna for having the relationship and the strength to bring you forward. Thank you, Lumineers, for staying in tune. If everybody would take a nice deep breath.